Joining me right now is New York Congresswoman Claudia Tenney, a member of the House Ways and Means Committee. Congresswoman, wow, the, the story gets deeper and deeper every day. Your reaction? Yeah, it's amazing that a guy like Joe Biden, who's lived on a either a congressman, a senator, or a VP salary, which, by the way, are generous, but they're not in the millions. How is he loaning all this money to everyone with no loan documents and all, and now getting paid back through these sleazy operations using his name? Again, as we've always talked about on the show, Maria, this is all about Joe Biden using his name and his clout as a politician with a lot of power to enrich himself and his family. And all he's done is, you know, they've sold the name. Even Hunter talks about it. You know, it's my dad's name. It's my dad. We, we, you know, we had the text message. But all this got started because of the whistleblowers. And the whistleblowers revealed the information and the data we needed because we had so, you know, this this stuff wasn't available. We've been subpoenaing, they're denying subpoenas. Hunter Biden denied a subpoena. We had Eric Swalwell, which looks like he may have been aiding and abetting a contempt of a subpoena. The other day, when Hunter refused to testify, showed up in Washington, went to the Senate side of, of the Capitol, but refused to come in under a subpoena. And th this is the kind of, if, if this were a Republican, if this were someone of the Trump administration, they would be in jail or they would be held in contempt of Congress and be heading there. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that is, is Joe Biden is doing. And I think, Maria, it's interesting that all of a sudden all this stuff is really starting to come out. Yes, through the great work of Chairman uh, Jason Smith, Jim Jordan, and obviously James Comer uh, running our oversight committee is doing an excellent job. The drip, drip, drip makes me think that maybe the Democrats under Merrick Garland, the dirty cop that runs the Department of Justice, is starting to say, you know, Let's let this go, because Joe Biden's numbers are the worst in the modern era, worst presidential numbers in the modern era. He's making Jimmy Carter's numbers look good. There's, even Jimmy Carter's numbers were good. So now it may be time to let Joe Biden get launched and removed from the ticket so they can put someone else in, because President Trump is literally beating Biden everywhere. And so I don't, you know, this is corruption. The Democrats are starting to face the reality and just, you know, whether it's the daughter coming out with tax evasion, the tax evasion that was the slow walk by the IRS, uh, not, you you know, letting Hunter forgive some of the worst of his tax evasion and yeah. now refusal to, you know, we, as uh, James Comer just described, his his buddy, uh, the, the wealthy lawyer who paid his taxes at the last minute in 2020, right before the election because of political reasons, which was revealed in one of those e emails where Joe Biden, as the vice president, was using a pseudonym, you know, to try to uh, deflect from this, 20 shell companies you know, dozens of bank accounts and foreign entities that make it almost impossible to pick up this web. But the pieces are coming together and the people are starting to see, as you and I have been saying for months, in plain sight, Joe mm. Biden is committing corruption and a cover up unprecedented in American history. Well, you mentioned a lot there, and I want to go through it, because the fact that Hunter Biden could skip out on this congressional subpoena in the way he did last week was so incredible to me. Imagine if, and not just Trump, any American citizen defies a congressional subpoena and then shows up in D.C. to stick it in your eye, to say, yeah, I'm here, but I'm not going behind any closed doors. And the p person that he was with, Kevin Morris, which we broke this story on Sunday, uh, Kevin Morris was the guy who paid his taxes, this sugar, sugar daddy or sugar brother, whatever you want to call it. He was asked by your committee to go speak to your committee, uh, do a deposition, do an interview. And his people, according to Jason Smith, your committee chairman told me this on Sunday, uh, that he told them that he was traveling overseas and was not available. And again, stick it in your eye, he's actually right there, right under your nose in Washington. Here's Jason Smith from Sunday Morning Futures, the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. Watch. That's Kevin Morris. It's pictured alongside Hunter Biden. We've been working with Kevin Morris's attorney to bring him in, but they told us that he is out of the country on vacation between Thanksgiving and New Year's. However, it sure doesn't look like he's out of the country. And what's so important for us to get to the details there is the IRS whistleblowers um, have highlighted where Kevin Morris paid almost $2 million of Hunter Biden's taxes, plus an additional almost $3 million just to subsidize 
subsidize Hunter Biden's lifestyle. What's also important is these IRS whistleblowers released an email from Kevin Morris to Hunter Biden's tax preparer three weeks before Super Tuesday in 2020, saying that they must pay these tax returns or there will be great political risk. The only political risk is Joe Biden. It's all very strange, Congresswoman. He skips out of the congressional subpoena last week. Um, you know, there's, there's all of this on Kevin Morris. Last week, Hunter Biden was seen jewelry shopping with his father, President Biden, in Delaware. This was yesterday afternoon. The New York Post editorial board writes, Ashley Biden taxes Dodge shows all Bidens think law does not apply to them. The president's youngest daughter owes more than $5,000 in income taxes, we're told. How many times do we hear Joe Biden telling us to pay their fair share? And also, one more thing, all these uh, whistleblower uh, comments about all these different emails. Joe Biden said he had no involvement in his, in, in his son's business, and yet he's got 54 emails directly with Eric Schwerin, according to Jason Smith. Eric Schwerin is the guy who set up all those, uh, uh, those shelters for taxes, the, uh, the LLCs or, or, or those, you know, 20 LLC accounts. He set them up. Why would Joe Biden be directing emails to him one-on-one? -on -one? And remember, this is when Joe Biden was vice president of the United States when a lot of these were happening. There were over 300 emails. So you're just highlighting right. the Eric Swearin emails. Right. But there are 80,000, 82,000 pages from those emails that the National Archives has in their possession that they refuse to hand over. So here's Joe Biden's own executive branch, the government he controls, engaging in the cover-up and the slow walking. And one of the things the whistleblower said, Maria, in their last testimony is, we need a special counsel. They refuse to hire, put a special counsel in place. The people in place are helping cover this up. They're helping Joe Biden. And they've been doing this since the laptop was covered up by the FBI. And, and Merrick Garland, and they do nothing. And, you know, Eric Schwerin should be held in, or, or, I mean, uh, Eric, Eric uh, Swalwell should be implicated, uh, Hunter Biden, all of them for refusing a subpoena. If this were right. uh, Bannon or if this were uh, Peter Navarro, they would be facing criminal contempt charges. And so this is, the, again, the two-tier justice we hear about. But you know what's incredible? Uh, this, uh, this, this fancy lawyer from uh, out in, in California, what a wonderful donor, a guy that's willing to buy Hunter Biden's paintings. Apparently, yeah. there's evidence that he bought the paintings. So that's money laundering. You can't, I don't, first of all, let's be honest, wow. I don't believe Hunter Biden made these paintings. I think this is just another scheme to get money to the Bidens. You know, right. oh, he's a drug addict. He's, do, he's doing paintings now. And all of a sudden, wow. you're spending, you know, like this guy who's been paying his taxes is yeah, spending right. half a million dollars for a painting. I mean, yeah, come on, this is all, you know, people are starting to see it. Yeah, and 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 they. It's really bad. It's, I months. think it's the worst in our Ameri in history. I don't think there's J anything like it. Jason Smith, the chairman, said that they only knew each other two months before he paid millions of dollars for his taxes. Ex it's the whole thing is reeking with just mystery. Meanwhile, what the heck is going on in New York? First, you have these ridiculous comments by Mayor Adams bringing up 9/11 as the city. You know, anything can happen, and then you got New York Governor Andrew Cuomo of all people saying that the city should stop the plan to add a $15 toll to enter Midtown Manhattan's business district. District, saying that the toll combined with the high crime and homelessness will cause potential visitors to just stay home. Remember 2019, Cuomo was pushing this $15 toll? At the time, he claimed very rich people can afford to drive into Manhattan, Congresswoman. Can you imagine, just to get from uptown to downtown, if you pass that way, you have to pay $15. Well, Governor Cuomo's getting ready to run potentially against Mayor Adams because he's ahead in the polls by a lot. And I just want to remind everyone, when you think about the major crisis we're going on with illegal immigrants and some of the problems that are causing our Customs and Border Control, our, our police officers, the defund the police movement, Cuomo was governor when they passed the green light bill, which gave driver's licenses to illegal immigrants. And those people, 85% of the people on the terror watch list are coming across our northern border. That's New York. And they're coming into this, this country and they're getting licenses. And there's another element of this green light law. It protects illegal immigrants. It gives them protections under our laws, unconstitutional as it is, it's in place because of Cuomo. So we have this huge migrant crisis in New York. Mayor Adams is overrun. Bad work by de Blasio. Weakness by Mayor Adams. And now Cuomo thinks he's going to come in and do a 180 on all of his policies to try to protect New Yorkers. 
and, and, and this is, again, this is a dangerous, these are all dangerous policies. Yeah. And that's probably why Governor Cuomo is doing a 180 on some of these rules that he put in place or yeah. supported when he was governor of the state. Sounds like you think he's more apt to run for mayor <laughs> than take on Kathy Hochul for governor. I think he's going to go for governor. I don't know if he's going to go for governor again. Okay. Uh, you know, there's we'll uh, he's got some Me Too issues that are never going to go away. Yeah, but there, yeah. there are those Claudia, women that love Cuomo still. <laughs> Claudia Tenney, thank you.